All Things Bike with Fred Thomas is brought to you by Frame and Wheel, eBay selling services for cyclists and bike shops throughout New England, and AD Bikes, the modern face of Austro Daimler Cycling and the bike company of the future. Hi there everybody, my name is Fred Thomas and you are watching All Things Bike, a new program dedicated to the bicycle, the culture of the bicycle, and the personalities and organizations that make the bicycle community roll here and away. We have a very good show lined up for you tonight. Uh, we will be talking bikes with Ted Darling, the president of the Portland Velo Club and we will be talking bikes with Josh Freeman about how to keep our bicycles clean, fast, and safe. Um, but before we start in with that, I want to let you know that you can reach us here at the studio through email, and the email for that is contactallthingsbike at gmail. So good evening, Ted. Hey, Fred. Did you ride your bicycle today? Fred, I wish I could and wish I had, but I, I wasn't able to get out today, so. I know, um, it's hard, it's hard. Um, it's the hardest thing. Riding your bike on a regular basis takes time. And well, especially now that the days have started to contract and, this is true. and this distance is true. and size. You're not one of those people who's riding their bikes at like five in the morning. Well, the there's a group of us that go out. Uh, I oh. go out on Tuesday and Thursdays with a group called the Dawn Patrol. And oh, this yeah. time of year, we're out at 520 and we've got... Still heavy. doing it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But isn't it cold? Or... We dress. You dress. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, that's good. Well, um, you know, to ride your bike once, well, you know, one hour, once a day is better than nothing. No so, doubt about uh, that. Um, but tell us now about the uh, Portland Vela Club. I, I mean, we know it's um, uh, one of the largest um, clubs in Maine, and it's been around for a while, but... Uh, you know, everybody knows um, that much about it, I don't think, um, except for its members. Um, um, how, how big is it? So uh, presently, the Portland Velo Club has about 150 members, mm -hmm. um, really? about 90 men and 60 women. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the club was established back in 1989, mm -hmm. um, and it really came out of a group of uh, uh, men and women who were right. riding and racing bikes back in the mid 80s um, wow. and uh, formalized it uh, in the form of a club in yeah. Uh, 1989. Yeah. And, and um, I mean, is it true? I mean, do you, do you have to ride fast and have a 10 speed bike to be a member of the Portland Velo Club? Or? Well, absolutely not. It's funny because uh, I came up through the ranks as mm -hmm. just sort of a, a, a trek across Maine type of rider <laughs> and um, you know, always saw the Portland Velo Club with the right. distinctive colors yeah, yeah. and thought- And they've you know, changed though. I mean, they they, they used have to changed, be, yeah, yeah, but it, we tried to get back to this kind of original true yeah. uh, sorts of colors. And uh, it always had a, a very sort of uh, fast uh, yeah. feel about the group. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so I think there's a perception uh, yeah. among people that you have to be a fast rider, but yeah. um, that's not necessarily the case. That's true. Um, the Portland Velo Club, uh, PVC as we call it, is really about you know riding, mm -hmm. uh, racing bikes, uh, people coming together and enjoying, yeah, uh, yeah. enjoying the bike. And uh, it's definitely a reputation the club has yeah. um, as being faster bike riders, but um, it's not certainly not a precursor to, yeah. uh, to, to doing that. Yeah, well, um, I, I remember the first time I saw the Portland Velo Club and, uh, you know, that group of riders who, who um, I think they were going north on Shore Road in Cape Elizabeth and, and uh, I had been retired from riding my bike at a high rate of speed for a while and I saw this group coming through and it was, it was terribly exciting. It, it you know, I, it, it rekindled the, 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 the passion I had for racing. And, uh, 
and I, I said to myself, you know, I, I got to get my bike back. I got to get it out of the garage and, and, and join that organization. And, uh, and I realize now that, that if I hadn't done that, I'd have no friends because <laughs> all my friends are out of the Portland Velo Club. And, and they're not all, you know, um, you know, they're not all cyclists, it seems like. Um, um, but, you know, some, some guys are, are, and women, are um, members of, of the club, but they're not always there on the Saturday morning ride. Are there other, are there other rides besides the Saturday morning ride? So, yeah, the Saturday about? morning ride it tends to attract a, a, lot of, uh, yeah. a lot of people, and it's probably the most high-profile ride. Yeah, and, yeah. and as you know, you've ridden around the state and around the country. It's probably yeah. one of the more it is. Um, interesting rides. Well, and, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and people come here in the summertime all around yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. just to get in on uh, on yeah. that ride, which yeah, is really true. really cool. But you know, we've uh, over the past several years we've um, added um, uh, a Monday night uh, ride, yeah. um, uh, primarily a women's ride, right. uh, Monday night recovery ride. Um, we offer a Tuesday night ride, which you're right. familiar with, which is oh, yeah, probably yeah. one of the most difficult rides yeah, yeah. Um, uh, in, <laughs> the, uh, in the state. <laughs> Uh, there's a couple of Wednesday night rides mm -hmm. now, um, and that sort of rounds out our uh, list. Unfortunately, we tried a 60-plus type ride this oh, yeah, year to try yeah. to attract an older member on yeah. Thursday nights, and yeah. uh, it really didn't get off the ground the way we'd hoped. And so yeah. anybody who's hoping to, uh, yeah. that wants to keep riding, uh, we definitely have a group of, uh, of uh, folks that are, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, 50, 60-plus that are, that are trying to get together and ride in, in a group format. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, I mean, first time it doesn't stick doesn't mean it. Can't, yeah, we'll try, try happen. again. Yeah. What about juniors? Is there is there some sort of program for the for the you know the 15, 16 year old kids? Because I mean, I noticed on the Saturday morning ride, uh, you know, there's there are a couple twenty five year olds, and uh, you know. I mean, I, that's what I think is young. But I mean, what about what about the, the yeah? The I mean, we, I think we'd like to see some more enthusiasm for yeah. uh, the junior group. Uh, several years back, one of my predecessors of the club, uh, Paul Weiss, <coughs> really did a good job, sort oh, yeah, of building yeah. up the the, uh, the juniors yeah, program. Right. And uh, but that that sort of comes and goes with right. the uh, with the interest in and in, uh, among the the younger folks. Yeah, um, right. And it's tough without a sort of organized sport. I mean, it's really an aspirational That's true. thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think during the uh, sort of yeah. Lance Armstrong era, there was probably more yeah. um, interest profile. In that. Yeah, right. Yeah. And it's not like profile. it's not like the Saturday morning um, bike races. Right. That, exactly. That you might have right. um, soccer it competes yeah. with all of those types of things in the fall. And yeah. Well, what about the um, the other the other event that? Um, is associated with the Portland Velo Club, maybe indirectly. I'm not so sure. Is the um, the Yarmouth Clam Festival? What? What? Um, I mean, what is the relationship there exactly? How does that work? So, um, yeah, you're referring to the big bike race at the. Yeah, we call yeah. it the Clammer. The, the Clammer. Or as but there are no clams. The clam That's what I don't understand. It's the Clammer. Oh yeah. And uh, <laughs> so up at the Clam Festival, there's a Sunday morning, mid July, uh, uh, about a hundred hundred people. Yeah, uh, yeah. gather and race. Uh, Portland Velo Club uh, hosts that race I see. Um, and uh, try to give our sponsors um, some recognition during during that race. And yeah. uh, it's been a race that's been around for probably 15 years now. Um, yeah, and uh, it's really become sort of a, a real focal point of the Clam Festival yeah, in, yeah, yeah. in the summer and uh, really attracts a lot of people on, on Sundays. And, yeah, that's right. Um, so, yeah, it's been a great Great, yeah, uh, I think, I mean, I, this, la, this year I did it, and the previous years I'm not sure if I did, but uh, the one thing that's distinctive about that event is that they, they, the, the spectators come out, and they, and they really um, cheer. What is cheer. it, a three-mile circuit or something like is that? It, uh, yeah, and I think it is. And, um, Ten it's, times. It seems so a lot longer yeah. when you're trying to keep up with the, <laughs> the guys up front. No but, doubt. But, um, but the one thing you do notice through the, the, the haze of, of, the, of the trauma of going up the, those hills at that speed is, is there are just a lot of people who are out there saying, come on, let's go. Yeah, yeah Cheering it's exciting. You on. Um, that's good. Well, um, what, um, what about, uh, are there any grand plans um, for, the, for the club or, or any, any directions that... That, um, that, that you and the board sort of mull over um, that, that are worth... Yeah, so one out. of the things, as you know, it, it, the, the racing component of the club comes around and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. goes around. So probably yeah, yeah. maybe 10 years ago, there was more of a, uh, an elite development That's type right. team, which was a younger team yeah. that the club sponsored and supported. Yeah. Uh, and that had its time. It came and went. That's so true. And, yeah. uh, and then, you know, probably 
six, seven years ago, uh, mm -hmm. the club supported a, a, a master's uh, racing yeah, yeah, program, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, and uh, that had its time, you yeah, know, four yeah, or five yeah. years of, uh, and and then these things seem to come in, in cycles, no yeah, pun yeah. intended. Yeah, um, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I think that's something that we're looking. Yeah. Uh, to now in terms of you know rekindling the race program yeah, within right. the the Portland Velo Club, and I think that really requires you know someone who's interested in being a director, sportive, right. somebody who can sort of coach the, the team and really be the involved. Cheerleader, the, yeah. yeah, and organize events. And you know, you talked about the Clam Festival. One of the things yeah. that's been tough for the cycling community is bike races are. Um, harder to finance um, in formal races now, and a lot of yeah. races around the region Even have Baton Kill apparently. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, I didn't know that. Sorry to drop that on you, but oh. it may be true. Yeah, well, but yeah. I mean, you know, so you're saying that that might not be well, financially viable. Well, there was a, there was an article in the and someone sent me an article and and um and they you know even the tour of the Catskills finally just went the way right. Of the, so so these these races these have events, having yeah. you know there's a lot of competition. Yeah. There's uh, you know, from triathlon to yeah. muddy rudders or whatever they're called now, <laughs> <laughs> um, but a lot of competition for those yeah. events and not a lot of uh, as much support as uh, there used to be. Yeah, yeah, understood. Well, um, the bottom line is that riding our bikes are, is um, is fun. I mean, for me, it's 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 a it's become part of my my programming. I think it always was part of my programming. I just. Um, you know, I took took ten years off and came back to it, and, and now I can't really function without getting well, out. Well, the health and life. fitness aspect of it. Absolutely, as well. and and being able to get out of the, get out of the, the office or the house and 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 just see the I neighborhood. I talk to so many people who say it's just such a huge stress redu reducer uh, for them. And, yeah, uh, I know. You yeah, know, yeah. it's a high. You know, there's a lot going on, and Apparently, a lot of professionals. And that's true. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's um, you know a lot of yeah. It's a great opportunity to meet meet people with a common interest and. And the fitness, and and to get out and see your neighborhood, and then uh, even other parts of the country. I mean, so um, I basically I I am become bike is is what I yeah, you know, what I say and know. And the Portland Velo Club and any club I think is a great way to sort of formalize it. And um, and um, clubs are social organizations, and people are social creatures, and you know the the two um, are there um, and they work well. Um, thank you, Ted. Fred, thanks we, for having me on. Some great, appreciate it. Talking some yeah, good great, bikes here. Great program. Thank yeah, you. well, thanks. Uh, um, it, it's been good. And um, we're going to uh, now take a short break and talk to uh, Josh Freeman of Freeman's Bicycle Service. Uh, and he's going to give us a quick tutorial on how to clean our bikes, talk about our bikes, and um, keep them running safely and smoothly. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Mom, I'm trusting you with the keys. Drive safely. I promise. If you drive a bicycle, you need to know the rules of the road. Always ride on the right with traffic. Obey all stop signs and traffic lights. Signal and look back before turning. If you're biking at night, use lights and wear bright clothes. This safety message was brought to you by the Bicycle Coalition of Maine, www.bikemaine.org. We're making Maine a better place to bicycle. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to All Things Bike. We are talking to Josh Freeman of Freeman's Bicycle Service about how to keep your bicycle clean, fast, and safe. Good evening, Josh. Hi, Fred. How are you? I'm well. Thanks for coming down. Thanks is for it, me. Is it true that a clean bike is a fast bike? Sure. Absolutely. I thought so. Yeah. I thought so. I'm pretty bad about keeping my bike clean. In fact, you uh, must know that usually when I turn up, right, but that's why you come in. My bike is is been um, it's been savaged, but in a positive way. I like to ride my bike so much that sometimes I neglect to clean it, and I think that's a common I think that's a common problem, right? I mean, if you like what you're doing, you you ride your bike as much as you can. You come back, and there's some place you got to be, something you got to do. Yep. Absolutely. That's why we rely on experts like you to keep our bikes clean. Um, so yeah, well, I mean, let's 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 talk about that. Um, how would you um, how would you describe you know your tune-ups, your sure. your basic complete tune-ups? Yeah, absolutely. Um, tune-ups are um, you know you're going through everything on the bike, right? To make sure it's a safe to ride, right? And so a lot of times um, at the shop, if I have a bike. Uh, if I, we don't feel it's safe to ride when right. out the door, <laughs> then you know, we won't charge you for a tune-up. But at the yeah. same time, that's what I think you've told me that a couple times. Right? Yeah. yeah. 
And so um, with the basic tune-up, you're, bas you're going through the entire bicycle. Um, you know, right. from brakes to your derailleurs, your chain, checking the bottom bracket right, on your crank, right. all the way up to the front, front brakes, handlebars, everything's tight yeah. and torqued properly. Yeah. And um, well, what's unsafe? I mean, what's like red flag? Sure. Beep, beep, do yeah. not ride. Unsafe is, is things that we'll look at when we're yeah. um, uh, when you bring in your bicycle. Yeah. yeah. Uh, brake pads, just oh, yeah, like yeah, a yeah. vehicle. You can think of it that way too. Yeah. Uh, chains wear out, yeah. um, and so it's good to replace your chain so mm. to prevent breaking, but at the same time, prevent wearing other yeah, components yeah. out. Yeah, a broken chain is, is the end of your ride, and that's when you're picking up the cell phone right. and calling your, exactly. your better half, saying, yeah. come and get me. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, yeah, well, that's, yeah, that's good. Um, and, um, but the, you know, there's not a lot of bikes that are... Mm. Um, that can be unsafe, if you will, but right. there are a lot of inexpensive bikes that you can buy at big department stores yeah, right, right. that were unsafe to they, begin with they when have, you purchased the bike. Yeah, there's some different standards there. Yep. But you know, you, you're dealing mostly with road bikes, mountain bikes, and triathlon bikes. And, That's and right. What are the, so what, I mean, what, what are the common things and, and um, what, would, um, what would be the, what would be the, the basic tune-up? How about that? Yeah, yeah. sure. Um, when you bring in your bike, what we want to do is make sure and, and almost just suggest mm -hmm. parts to your bicycle to keep it going. Right, right. And so our goal is to uh, look at your tire wear, yeah, brake yeah. pad wear, chain wear, and the teeth on your chain rings, cassette, yeah. pulley wheels on your derailleur. So we'll be able to give that a good uh, look. And at the same time, depending on the customer's budget, yeah, yeah, right. where do you want to go with this? Yeah, What's yeah, your yeah. plan this summer? You just took it out of the barn. Can, Are you planning to put on a lot of miles? Yeah, yeah or um, are you planning to get into it yeah, and yeah. Uh, what uh, are your goals? So we'll have a set uh, amount of things that we'd suggest that you do right, right. Uh, depending on your goals. Right, right. So if I, am, you know, this, if I want to ride this bike all summer, um, it's, been sitting in, it's been sitting in the garage all winter. We've got some riding last, last year. So what, how's the chain looking on this thing? Yeah, sure. Um, of course, I put it all the place. So these are little chain checkers. Um, which are nice to have. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's basically, it's a tapered tool mm -hmm. that where a, a brand new chain, uh, when you bring it in, mm -hmm. uh, a brand new chain, right. it will not fall in through the link. So we're basically just putting it on one side mm -hmm. and we're measuring the wear of the rollers on uh -huh. the chain. Um, and in this case, as I put it down, it oh, drops oh. all the way to max. Jeez. Which means new chain, um, right? it's, we suggest <laughs> a new chain, um, but at the same time, it's so worn out really? that it's very possible that uh, yeah. a few cogs on your cassette won't work as well with a yeah, new yeah, tight yeah, yeah. chain. Um, I always like to use this example here mm -hmm. as this is what we're measuring with the rollers of a chain. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a brand new chain. Mm -hmm. After a while those rollers become smaller which allows that chain checker to fall in right, right. between them. Uh, once those gaps are too wide a brand new tight chain right. won't work well with. Right, and then you got a skipping chain. Sometimes. That's right. right yeah. I'm, I've, I've had that happen. Yeah, and, exactly. And uh, I mean, it, it's, um, yeah, I, mean, I, I think it's true. Um, please confirm. If you, your, your chain is worn out like this one, you're going to wear out your cassette more quickly. Yeah. And, and, but if you, change, if, you, if you change your chain, um, Frequently, you will not have to go out and buy a new cassette as as much Correct. as you would otherwise. And and the the, the the idea there is cassettes are expensive, chains are not That's nearly right. as expensive. That's right. So uh, the changing it. your chain, um, uh, we sell a lot of chains. Yeah. Because well, if right if, here. and I say, and of course it's not likely, but if you sold your chain, chains can run anywhere from fifteen dollars yeah. up to sixty dollars. Right, right. If you change your chain every week, nothing's gonna wear out. Uh -huh. But usually um, a chain will, won't wear in a certain amount of mileage, right. uh, but uh, clients of ours mm -hmm. will change a chain every two months and oh, they're putting yeah. on 2,500 miles, um, I can't say within the two months, but whatever they're doing for two months, amount of riding, yeah. it wears out. That war, that's so a every two chain. months they're getting chains. I see. Uh, when it comes in and it drops down to a maxed out chain, I'll always suggest, hey listen, 
we should do a new chain. If you right. don't replace the cassette, yeah. more than likely that chain is just going to keep wearing out faster yeah, 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 because yeah. of the worn cogs. Um, oh, that's, yeah, I, I hear that. That makes a lot of sense. But yeah. Putting, yeah. Um, what about brakes? I mean, what, what, um, how are the brake pads on this, on this bike looking? Yeah, at? I would say uh, they look pretty good. There's a lot of... Um, uh, a lot of pad left on there. Right. Uh, with that, since there's not a lot of wear, what we do in a tune-up is just make sure that the pads are centered on the on braking the surface and of not, the rim. Not rubbing the tire. That, that can be exactly. the injury ride, too. Yeah. And um, it, it, there's a lot to say just by feeling the rim of a bicycle to see how mm. many miles it's had on it. Uh, if it's a very concaved oh, braking yeah? surface, then you know this bike has been through a <laughs> lot. While the customer is saying it hasn't been ridden too much, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you can really read what's yeah. going on. So while uh, you're checking in your bike, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll notice those little things. Yeah, yeah. And we won't invest a lot of money in your bicycle because eventually you're going to need a new wheel set. might be worth yeah, right. going to your local bike shop and getting a new right, right. bicycle. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, understood. What about um, um, cables? That's always been a sort of a, a mystery to me, especially when he gets down to this, you know, adjusting your derailleur, you tune it this way to make the derailleur go that way. I mean, it's a black, a black art almost. Exactly. But what, what, um, what should people know about about the the cables or when they need to be changed or you know. yeah. usually when anybody has skipping or uh, shifting issues oh, yeah. um, uh, the cases the first thing we do is just replace the shift cable and housing oh yeah, yeah. It, it, and wherever it's skipping mm -hmm. or not dropping or working in certain areas right. um, the first thing to say is, well, we suggest just doing shift cable and housing. Yeah. For one, it's, it's, easy, it's right? impossible to tune a yeah. bike unless, and, and it's, it's simple, nice. yeah, right. depending on the bicycle. Yeah. Um, you know, where in this one, it's internal that's routing, it, yeah. um, yeah. and we have to find a way to get the cable through here and there. Yeah. Um, but that's why you come to us, because yeah. you can figure it out and, yeah. um, and ways, yeah. cost you know, minimal yeah. compared to uh, what you could do it for yourself. But yeah, yeah, usually yeah. the case is, if you ride uh, quite a bit, yeah. we'll always just suggest shift cable and housing every single season. Right, yeah. And I think, uh, yeah, makes, I think. makes things a lot easier, works better. Um, and yeah, and that's, that. that's a big part of uh, how tune-ups are really hard to just do a basic tune-up. Right, right. When you can't make a bike work without having to replace some sort right, of right. So there always there always has to be a certain willingness on the part of the customer to to spend some money um, doesn't have to be a lot, but the the customer has to sort of accept I'm going to be paying or spending 50 bucks to exactly. get this thing yep. running, and I could spend 150 to to get new tires or, right. or really bring it to um, sort of a heightened level. But um, um, but it's worth it, I I think. Um, yeah, it's all how much you plan to ride um, that bike. Yeah, right, you know? right. If you want it to work all the time, you got to plan to spend some money on it. So. Yeah, right. What about what about um, uh, you know general uh, um, pointers about checking wheels and and the frame yeah. and you know the bottom bracket because I mean the bottom bracket is I mean all that stuff is a, a bit mysterious to yeah. me. But I'll, although I do I do know that you know a loose spoke is something you can pretty easily. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Determine. I think you know a lot of. Um, uh, situations such as a uh, loose hub on a rear wheel or a broken spoke or just a wheel that's simply out of true oh, side yeah, yeah, to yeah. side, um, it's almost easier just to bring it into your shop oh, yeah, and, yeah. and um, have it fixed. Right. It's also hard to explain um, yeah. how to fix it to somebody who wants to do it themselves. Yeah, right. Um, uh, but with that, mm -hmm. th certain ways, if you have a lot of times with uh, frames today, they're mm -hmm. made of carbon. Yeah. Uh, carbon fiber, and uh, they tend to echo uh, uh, little clicks or creaks in Is the that, bike. Yeah, that's true. It makes it sound like a lot of the cases it's down in this area, because yeah. when I'm pedaling, I hear a pretty consistent click. Right. Um, uh, surprisingly, it's echoing from <laughs> up here, <laughs> up there, and you yeah, never yeah. know. Uh, yeah, yeah, where yeah. it's coming from so it's kind of uh, today's bikes are it, yeah. it's difficult to uh, figure that out but yeah, yeah. Um, you know the, you know with that with the bottom bracket of uh, uh, of the bicycle which is basically what the crank rolls on the bearings yeah. that are inside the yeah, frame yeah, yeah. a lot of times if it's uh, creaking it will just you know move this side to side, side to side and you'll feel a little slight that play one? in that yeah. uh -oh. <laughs> um, but that's <laughs> this okay bike needs an appointment yeah yeah but yeah uh, yeah that's yeah and same with the headset i mean that's also a, a, an area where people right um it's an important part of the bike it allows you to turn the wheel properly or to the front 
mechanism, steering right. mechanism, and, and it does go loose. Um, what, it, what, what's the, what do you check for there? Well, uh, a headset basically are bearings uh, in the head tube of the frame. Yeah, right. And in this case, it's uh, bearings that are um, integrated into the Mm -hmm. top and bottom of the head tube, right. uh, the forks steer tube that runs right. all the way up to here, yep. uh, the top of the uh, stem cap. Yeah. Uh, basically that one bolt yeah. compresses those bearings together till it's a perfect right, right. situation, the uh, perfect uh, position or yeah. um, adjustment alignment, that, yeah. uh, alignment that allows it to uh, uh, float freely if yeah. you had your hands off the bicycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, if it was Which loose, what happens... You're not supposed happens... to do that unless you're winning a race. That's right. I'm not even sure you're supposed to do that. How many times have you done it? Not that many times. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh. So, uh, but that's very important. Yeah, I know. And, and just Definitely. having your bike in for a tune-up every yeah, yeah. year, those are the things that are checked. Yeah. Uh, uh, a loose headset usually uh, be right can there. be easily adjusted, yeah. but can cause a lot of problems yeah. uh, to your frame and, and uh, the components yeah. and um, could cause an accident yeah, if you yeah, have a yeah. loose, loose headset. So. That's great, Josh. Well, I think that, that's a great um, overview. And um, thanks so much for yeah, coming in and, and giving, us, giving us yep. this, this tour of the bike. So thank you very much for watching All Things Bike. Um, again, if you have any questions or email or ideas, you can email us at contact allthingsbike at gmail.com and we will do our best to answer those questions and thanks so much for watching and we look forward to doing another show uh, with you to talk bikes. All Things Bike with Fred Thomas is brought to you by Frame and Wheel, eBay selling services for cyclists and bike shops throughout New England, and AD Bikes, the modern face of Austro-Daimler Cycling and the bike company of the future.